imagine you, you know. It is, but it isn't at the same time. I, I mean, I sat there and I, and I go back to a story I shared with y'all. I won't share the exact story, but y'all might remember, might not. But how happy people are whenever you get that call and say, hey, you've got a job. And everyone's so excited whenever you get your new job. But then, six months later, what are you doing? Complaining about the new job that you got. But yet, when you got the call saying you got the job, you said, oh, praise God, I got a job. Six months later, you're complaining about it. So. <laughs> it's too cold, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, and and this scripture in Deuteronomy that he said, it says you lack nothing. God provided you a job. You, you haven't lacked anything. Aren't we the same kind of sometimes, brother? On and more. Greed. On and more. Yeah, selfish. Very selfish. Let me tell you just a moment about a guy that in scripture, I don't know who your favorite character in the Bible is outside of Christ. Any of you? Paul? Paul is a very good one. Paul, obviously. Well, mine has always been Joseph. And let me tell you why. Joseph, 17 years old, was sold by his brothers. First, they were going to kill him. They couldn't even speak to him peacefully. They sold him. And he went in at 17, and he was in slavery and in prison. During that time, 13 years. Was he bitter? Why was he not bitter? Would you have been bitter? Wouldn't we have been bitter? Would we? Did he have a right to complain? What does he do? Potiphar. He becomes Potiphar's slave. And in fact, Potiphar saw that God was with him and turned everything over to him, didn't he? And then Joseph, the, you know the temptation for Potiphar's wife. And what did Joseph do? He did the right thing. Fled. What happened to Joseph? <laughs> yes, where did he end up? He did the right thing, but yet he ended up in prison. You say, Lord, why me? That doesn't add up. Doesn't, would he have a right to complain? What did he do? He got in prison. He was in prison. And he started just taking over the prison. This wall needs to be painted. This needs to be cleaned up. And what was he doing? He was running the prison. How can you do that? You've got to have something, don't you? And at the age of 30 years old, he came before Pharaoh. And Pharaoh recognized, and he told him the dream. This was about a dream. And he recognized, and Pharaoh said, it is obvious that the spirit of the Lord is in him. A pagan recognize that didn't he how could you go through that you do the right thing you end up in prison you got reason to suck and cry and storm about joseph didn't do that we have nothing to worry about folks if joseph can go through that this nation and whatever it does we don't have to worry about that and what did joseph he became a hebrew that was running the nation of Israel just below the authority of Pharaoh. He carried them through a time, uh, a tough time, didn't he? Why would we be afraid? And it just amazes me what a spirit, what an attitude, what a hope. Joseph saw the big picture. Do you remember when I was a kid, they'd come on, this is the big picture. That was a thing that they, the movies, they had the cartoons, and then they had the big picture. Some of us old enough remember that. He saw, the, you did, don't you? But he saw the big picture, didn't he? So I guess I'm telling you, no matter what your problems are, what you know, God is in control. He loves you, 
And we need to have that attitude and spirit that Joseph had. In fact, his brothers, it was 40 years later. I could give you the timeline, but probably don't have to tell you. Before, his brothers still decided he's going to kill us. You know, they said, when our father died, he even wanted you to promise that you weren't going to hurt us. They were still worried about selling him into slavery. He said, what did he say? You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Boy, what a man. What a man that can see the purpose of God and who's in control and honor him through the times that doing the right thing turned out prison. And but if you've ever been accused falsely of something, you can get very angry. Especially something with a sexual sin. I don't know of anything other than probably murder that you get accused of that would hurt you, that you were absolutely didn't have anything to do with any more than something like that. Oh, Joseph, he stood firm and he kept moving forward and it was all for God. And what a lesson, uh, you know, anyway. we, can, we can talk about the children of Israel and how uh -huh. they keep complaining, but we can look at Joseph and say, we don't have to. We don't have to. And we, we don't yeah, have to. Yeah, we don't have to. Okay, I didn't mean to get off on no, that so much. No, but thank anyway. you, brother. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we're going to jump into Numbers chapter 20. Let's read uh, verses 14 through 20. Hello, is the gray one on? Okay. Now Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom, Thus says your brother Israel, you shall know all the hardship that has befallen, befallen us, how our fathers went down to Egypt and we dwelt in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians afflicted us and our fathers. When we cried out to the Lord, he heard our voice and sent the angel and brought us up out of Egypt. Now here we are in Kadesh, a city on the edge of your border. Please let us pass through your country. We will not pass through fields or vineyards, nor will we drink water from wells. We will go along the king's highway. We will not turn aside to the right hand or to the left until we have passed through your territory. Then Edom said to him, You shall not pass through my land, lest I come out against you with a sword. So the children of Israel said to him, we will go by the highway, and if I or my livestock drink any of your water, then I will pay for it. Let me only pass through on foot, nothing more. The, then he said, you shall not pass through. So Edom came out against them with many men and with a strong hand. There you Thus, go. There you go. Let, just okay. stop right there. Um, and don't let me forget to read verse 21. All right. Now, here's a question. Who was it that was giving the direction that they were wanting to go through Eden, Edom? Who was it that's given the direction? Moses, right? So, and, and what verse did Moses start this conversation? Verse number 14. What does verse number 12 say? Okay, the Lord spoke to Moses, but what does it say? A little bit louder, Ruth Ann. You are not going to bring the assembly into the land. That's what is said in verse number 12. What do you see in verse number 14? Huh? Moses not following direction? He sent messengers because what's he's planning on doing? We're still going, right? I, I, I just point that out to say Moses just received some of the most devastating news that he could probably receive. You've been leading this group of people 
for over 40 years. You've seen all of this take place, and now you need to know you are not going to get to see the benefits of all the work. Now, if that had been you, how might you have responded? Got mad. Thank you, Frank, for being honest. What else might you do? Huh? Gone spiteful. Anybody want to say, that's it, I quit. I'm done. I've, I've fought this. I've been, I've, been, I've been going down this road all this time. I, I'm just, I've done everything you've ever asked me to do. I'm just going to quit. Wouldn't that be the normal reaction of people? You see, Bob, I think that, that verse number 12 and verse number 14 being so close together tells us that, hey, even whenever we receive what was really bad news or, or you're attacked or something happens, you still move forward for the Lord. That's right. Moses could have quit at that moment and said, fine, deal with them yourself. I'm not going to get to go, so I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to cry. And I'm going to die. But well, you so do many it, times whatever you want to with these three million yeah, people. So many times we let our circumstances control us and that dictates our attitude and our behavior. Uh, and it just can wipe us out. Uh, and, and, and that, as I read that, I thought, it is so easy for Moses to just say, I'm done. But he didn't. He said, I mean, it's literally a verse away. He's like, all right, I'm not going to, get, going to get to go, but come on, let's go ahead. Let's keep going, folks. He kept leading. He kept moving. All right, I'm not going to get to see it, but hey, you know, we still got to get there. We still got to get there. Right. I think that says so much about Moses. And I think it's a message to us. Curtis? You've seen the earth open up and swallow people and all that stuff, too. I, I, but I'm just like, folks, he's been, Moses has been, this has been a rough life. He's seen a lot of good things, but he's dealt with a lot of issues. Yes, he has. And, he and, has grown and a lot say, and, you, and all the time you've got this vision of finally getting to the place that's been promised to you, and all of a sudden that's taken away from you. And that's my point about verse number 14. He was still faithful. He's like, all right, I don't get to go, but we're going to go. And, he, and somebody's got to lead them. Uh, something else uh, about this passage. Bob, who, who was this group of people? They were going to go through the Edomites. Uh, who are the Edomites? Uh, as it tells us in uh, Genesis 36, the very last verse, in their very last statement, it said Esau was the father of the Edomites. And so... Uh, we see that this is Esau, and so God, and let me, let me tell you a little bit about this. In Deuteronomy, and I love Deuteronomy because it summarizes everything that we've been doing, and this is what God tells now I command the people, saying, you're about to pass through the territory of your brethren, where, the descendants of the, where are you at? Esau. Deuteronomy 2, chapter, or verse 4. Deuteronomy 2, 4 was what he's reading there. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no no problem. I'm sorry. I should have got ahead of myself. I? But anyway, it says, you're about to pass through the territory of your brethren, the descendants of Esau, who is in Seir, and they will be afraid of you. Therefore, watch yourself carefully. Do not meddle with them, for I will not give you any of their land. No, not so much as one footstep, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. And God also said that about Moab and Ammon, which were the sons of Lot. So here we are. They're trying to deal with the king of Edom here. And uh, God had already told them, hey, this is not going to happen. You're going to have to do it. And as we were looking, trying to see that map on the top, we'll see what actually happened. They were in Kadesh Barnea. Again, that was just west of where they needed to go to get around 
uh, Edom. Edom was right on that border there to their east. Uh, in, in fact, um, uh, it, for them not getting go there, it's actually going to cost them a lot of time. Do, do we have that first map up there? Let's try to bring that. Do, I think it's that first one. Boom, boom. Excuse me. We do need a, I, th I, th I was actually thinking, but yeah. we got to get you one of those little red things that lasers. All right, let's keep, let's, well, that's fine. We'll keep going. Um, the, um, look, read verse number 21. Chapter 20. Okay, 21. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his territory, so Israel turned away from him. Moses then made a decision, and he had a decision. What was he going to do? He could either fight with them, or he could turn around and go a different way. Now, Bob, you've pointed out many times, uh, with all that's within inside us, live at peace with, with, with people. Right. And and yeah. Moses had a choice right here. He said, I, "Hey, I can either I can either fight with this group of people, and by the way, the Lord's with me, and we we can probably win this battle." Yeah. But he didn't. Yeah. He chose to respect the owner of the land, and said, "All right, then we won't go that way." Right. Yeah. You know, the scripture tells us, "If at all possible, as much as it depends on you, be at peace with all men." Now here's this map, uh, and. I don't yeah. know, Bob, if we can, if you can describe what you were talking about or not with this. I've got a pointer, but it's not that. Not it's not that, that long. long. <laughs> I, I don't know whether you can see it or not, but there's some red arrows. If you know where the Gulf of Aqaba is, which is in the lower part here, and <laughs> there's a red line that goes up toward. That's the King's Highway. That was a trade route. That was a major trade route from the Gulf of Aqaba down at the bottom of the the map up all the way it ran up it was on the east side of the jordan river it was on the east side of uh the dead sea uh, the sea of galilee and it went to damascus and then uh, it broke off toward the euphrates uh, river now this is really interesting because this is the place where jacob had traveled uh, it actually, part of it came around the top of the Sea of Galilee there at the top, if you could read that, and came down through Dalton. And that's where Joseph was sold uh, to the Ishmaelites. That was a trade route. And it also came across from Aqaba across towards Egypt. And then if you go to the west, that doesn't show on here, it went to Petra. You've heard this about Petra and the the cave and the way that the city there is built. But that was the main trade route. And these are the routes that uh, Jacob, Abraham travel when they were going to Haran. And, and also in between the Dead Sea and the Sea of Galilee, there's part of it came over to Shechem that we've studied about. There's a lot uh, that happened to Shechem if you don't remember. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, this is the main route. And what they've got to do, they're down below the, if you could see Edom there, I can see it from here, but it's below the uh, Dead Sea just to the right. It's the lower right of the Dead Sea there. And that's what they're trying to get around. They're going around from Kadesh Barnea across east, and then they're up. But they have to make a loop to get around Edom to come back up. Because they wouldn't let them pass through. Right. And Moses had pleaded and, and asked and tried to make uh, agreements with them. And they're like, nope, you can't. And if you do, we're going to fight with you. So Moses okay. said, all right, we won't go. And they were willing to pay for whatever they uh, used up. If their animals drank any water, they were willing to pay for that. They were willing to stay on the road and, and such they didn't go. So they made all these promises, but Edom wasn't having any part of it. And now let's, uh, let's, let's uh, jump into verse 22 through 29 uh, uh, and see what happens next. Now the children of Israel, the whole congregation, journeyed from Kadesh and came to Mount Hor. 
And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in Mount Hor by the border of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered to his people, for he shall not he shall be shall not enter the land which I have given to the children of Israel, because you rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring them up to Mount Hor, and st- strip Aaron of his garments, and put them on Eleazar his son, for Aaron shall be gathered to his people and die there. So Moses just did just as the Lord commanded, and they went up to Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. Moses stripped Aaron of his garments and put them on Eleazar his son, and Aaron died there on the top of the mountain. Then Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. Now when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, all the house of Israel mourned for Aaron 30 days. It's kind of interesting what took place. What happened in chapter 20, verse number 1? Miriam died. What happened in uh, uh, chapter 20, uh, this last passage that happened here? Aaron died. So in this one chapter... Miriam and Aaron both die, who are Moses' brother and sister. Uh, and they have, it happens in the same chapter. And Bob, we don't know for sure, but it's relatively close together, we think. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, it says in the first month that Miriam died, but it doesn't say what year. But we do know what year and month and day that Aaron died. In Numbers 33, verse 38, it says that he died in the first day of the fifth month of the 40th year. So we're getting close to completing the 40 years. First day of the fifth month. So they're getting really close to Canaan, but now we do see Aaron died. Now, they, why did God tell him to go up and strip the clothes off of Aaron? What's the, I mean, off, off of, yeah, off of Aaron. What was the purpose of that? Changing of the guard. That's a good way to describe it. Because really, what was the role of Aaron at the time? He was the high priest. And so the changing of the guard, if you will, was taking the high, the the garments of the high priest and passing it down to someone else. And that's the picture that you see take place there that, all right, this, this position is going to be passed on to someone else. Uh, and you see it take place for the very first time right here in uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 20, uh, that it takes place. And that's, it's, it's significant, uh, one, because it's the first time, but two, you'll see through Scripture the high priest referred to often. And here's an example of how it gets passed down uh, from, from person to person. Um, what do we know about El... Elzar, what do you know about him? Eleazar. Eleazar. What do we know about him? I think that's later. I don't think we know that yet. I don't think so. That's right. We don't know that yet. Yeah. So we'll but go, you we'll will go know with that. a little bit more easy, easier answer here. Go ahead, Frank. What would you say? It's, it's, it's Aaron's son. What else do we know? Is he the firstborn of his sons? No. What happened to the first two older ones? They were killed. Why were they killed? Because they brought a strange fire in. Remember the story of the strange fire? And they, 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 in other words, they were trying to, they didn't respect the authority, the power of God. And they tried to bring a strange fire in. Um, but what else do we know? And this is, this one y'all might, I'll just go ahead and tell y'all. Because I, I picked up on it in, in reading this. He obviously had to have been training for this position and learning the role. And when it was time for him to step into the role, he was ready and prepared to step into the role. And the reason I wanted to point that out is 
I think that everyone should be preparing yourself for whatever role God has for you next, even though you might not know what that role is or when you're going to be handed the role to take over. In other words, when it was time for the garments to be taken off of his dad, it had never been done before, so he didn't know what was going on. He wasn't, it wasn't like he was saying, hey, I'm next in line because no one, no one has this concept yet. But he, he was prepared for the role that God had him for uh, and, and I wanted to say, you should be preparing yourself for whatever role God has for you that is next. You know, whatever you're doing, you should do unto the Lord. And he is preparing all of us. He has a plan. He has a purpose for us. It tells us, and that's to give us a future and a hope. The scripture tells us. And that's what he does in your life. He prepares you, and it's a building block. And I could tell you my story, uh, but someday maybe but anyway how he prepared me he prepares everyone and he goes through and the things that you do and the things that you learn so I always tell young people whatever job you have be thankful for it learn everything you can it's not where you're going to be it's where you are it's not where you're going to go but learn everything you can if you work at McDonald's what could you learn you could learn how to work with people can you really need the people skills and that's one of the things I find problem with businesses people have trouble working with each other there's a jealousy there's a greed there you know well I could do that if they paid me more well how much does it you have to get paid to get some work out of you <laughs> you know but God builds those things and we learn what you, logistics man you can learn a lot about logistics and preparing things and the cycle and the process they go through and you can apply it to many things so no matter where you are no matter how trouble you trouble trouble you know, your job is God is preparing you and he's got a plan for you and it will come about if you just stay faithful and keep moving and learning and, and, and Bob I, you talk you were talking about there in the business <coughs> world I think it's the same thing in the spiritual world Exactly. When I look at my own life, I mean, it started with trying to teach, you know, youth. And I didn't know what I was doing, but you just kind of, I started kind of cutting my teeth on how to teach in a youth class. And from that to leading a men's group and from leading a men's group to teaching a Sunday school class. And from, you know, I just, God is preparing you for these, these tasks and you don't know when you're going to be asked to do it. Um, and I remember the first time I was ever asked to teach an adult class and how it scared me. I was like, ah, and, but it, you just say yes. And you take the task that has been given to you and then watch what God does with it. Uh, it really is amazing. But I, that's what I see in, in, in this guy. He had no idea that he was going to be the next high priest, but he was prepared for it. So when the time came, he stepped up and he took the job. That's the way we should be for whatever role God has in your life. And it changes. But there's a time whenever you taught college and career. It's changed, right? Ruth and I started with kids on Sunday night, five-year-olds. Yeah. And do you together. want to go back and teach five-year-olds now? Oh, no. Thank That's you. what I'm saying. It changes. Okay. <laughs> let me tell you. I wasn't going to do this here. Maybe some other time. But let me tell you what God's got planned for me now. Do you mind me? To, okay. It won't take me just a minute here. And this is out of Psalm 71 verse starting with verse 17 oh god you have taught me from my youth taught me from my youth the person that influenced me the most was my grandmother and she died when i was five years old i had just turned five and in january 1950 she died now grandparents parents what an influence that you can have at such a young age she set my stage for life. Okay, here's what. And to this day, I declare your wondrous works. Now, also, when I am old. Now, David wrote this. But he was writing it for me, I guess. You know, he went through the same thing. So, all, now, also, when I am old and gray-headed and bald-headed, oh, God, do not forsake me. Until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is to come. And that's my purpose Amen. today. So I've gone through all of this to get to this. This is close to the end. But that's what Amen, created brother. people. 
Anyway. <laughs> Amen. No, brother, I, I love it. I, in fact, I love that you pointed out that verse yeah. and saying, this is my calling. This is what I've been called to do. And I've always looked for promises in God's word. And he's given me promise after promise. After, and this is his direction. Anybody else have any thoughts or comments? I've, and Bob, I, I would love sometime you take that time. Let's talk through your whole story that you want to. I think that would be really good. If we have time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be glad to do it. I'm all sorry. Day. It'll be an all day one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God Don't is think good. so, huh? And all the time. <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Father, Lord God, thank you so much for this evening. This time we can come and study your word. And Father, I just ask you'll allow us to take these examples inside your word, such as being prepared for the role whenever it comes our way. Uh, or Father, the, the, the example of Moses when he could have quit and he didn't. That he, he continued to serve you even though he already knew he would not see the promised land. Father, I just ask that you will help us to stay faithful servants to you, living out the purpose that you have in our life for your glory and only your glory. Father, I ask you'll have your hand upon this church. Guide us into all truth. We ask this in the name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen.